Hello, welcome to this journey of uh, learning about polymers. Uh, in this course, we are looking at uh, conceptual understanding of polymers, their uh, properties, their uses, as well as uh, aspects related to sustainability. So, uh, in this week, uh, we have been focusing on uh, properties and uh, we have already discussed uh, aspects related to the mechanical response in terms of stress strain curves as well as the elastic uh, behavior. Uh, in uh, this lecture, we will continue our discussion of mechanical properties, uh, and uh, but we will look at uh, the overall mechanical response and uh, the complexity of uh, the types of response that are possible when polymers are being considered as an engineering material from uh, structural applications into transport applications in automotive or uh, two-wheeler uh, applications or in aerospace applications. So, a plethora of uh, mechanical uh, responses need to be considered when we have any of these applications. So, uh, the different type of uh, mechanical response that we normally try to characterize and assess the property of a given polymer system uh, can be cl classified as uh, follows. So, uh, quite often uh, the what we have discussed so far is really only the static testing. Uh, this is quite often uh, done at a constant strain rate and uh, what we look at is basically stress strain curves and this is what we have uh, focused uh, so far in the 32nd lecture or the previous lecture, the 36th lecture. We have looked at uh, small deformation, large deformation, but uh, related to stress strain curves. And uh, so, uh, uh, of course, the classification also is that. Uh, if it is small deformation elasticity which is present in the material and this is for brittle and uh, both ductile polymers, uh, we have uh, linear elasticity. We can also have uh, large deformation and elasticity which we saw for uh, rubber like material in the previous lecture on uh, rubber elasticity. And uh, we also saw that uh, for ductile materials we have plasticity, where we said that orientations of chains and crystals take place. And uh, this is all in the context of uh, testing, which is in a particular way at a constant strain rate and therefore, it is called a static test. Now, moving on, when we look at uh, dynamic testing, uh, we generally tend to assess the response of the material as a function of time. So, in case of static testing, uh, the definition of elasticity itself took time out of any consideration. Stress is dependent on strain instantaneous value of stress is dependent on instant value of strain. So, what time, how much time, what is the rate, all of those are irrelevant. But in case of uh, viscoelastic material, where viscous dissipative response and elastic energy storage response are combined, then rate effects are extremely important. And so, dynamic testing is involved, considerations with respect to time is involved. And uh, so, uh, dynamic testing will usually be done when we apply a constant stress and look at strain as a function of time, which is called a creep experiment or we will have lot of uh, discussion related to dynamic testing by saying that I will apply a stress of sinusoidal kind. So, I intentionally apply a dynamic load on the material by deforming it. For example, if I am applying a torsion rather than just applying a torsion and then observing what I will do is I will apply a dynamic torsion on the material, a sinusoidal load on the material. So, this is another uh, way of characterizing the material. Elasticity is largely to do with energy storage and therefore, it can be characterized using static tests. But as soon as we look at dissipative materials, then rate effects and the dynamic tests become much more important. Now, uh, so, this uh, viscoelastic aspects uh, we will have a uh, lot of discussion related to when we look at viscoelasticity in polymers in these future lectures. Uh, impact uh, also uh, we will have a discussion in a separate lecture where the strain rate is extremely high. So, two materials which have let us say similar modulus and modulus is a property at small deformation, they need not have identical response at very high strain rates, because strain rates determine how the molecules and uh, crystals and whatever is the microstructure at the microscopic scale, how does it respond to the load that is being applied on the material. Uh, moving further down, 
uh, we also have the additional uh, properties of polymers uh, mechanical response which is relevant from very practical point of view. This is related to failure or fracture mechanics. How do the materials fail? How does crack propagate? And these are very important in terms of making design decisions with a given material. Similarly, a material may not be subjected to a very high amount of load so that it fails, but given that it has been functioning for 10 years or 15 years or uh, 70 years, then uh, it gets fatigued. Uh, it is an English term which we are familiar with, but in case of uh, polymeric or other materials, the damage starts occurring in the material and it starts accumulating slowly. And that is why this phenomena are called fatigue phenomena, where the load applied is much less than uh, the tensile strength and uh, but still damage happens in the material. Uh, at a preliminary glance, you may think that uh, the dynamic test where again there is a time varying load and a fatigue test also where there is a time varying load are similar phenomena. But if you had carefully noticed the description that I used, damage in case of fatigue while only structural response or macromolecular response in case of dynamic tests. So, the two are drastically different phenomena being attempted because the loads being applied or the strains being applied are in two different regions. Of course, there is a possibility that both of these contributions may be there at some given loads and that is what makes mechanics of engineering materials such a challenging subject. We also have of course, the impact uh, which we discussed, uh, we will be looking at it in a future lecture. So, these are all uh, gamut of uh, aspects of mechanical response which are important because macromolecular materials are such important class of engineering materials. The other aspect which is related to the overall mechanical response of uh, these uh, macromolecular system is the influence of rate effects and temperature. And the underlying idea in all of this is uh, associated with the time scale of macromolecular response. We have highlighted this uh, several times that uh, the macromolecules contain several scales of response, time scales as well as length scales. From a single bond stretching and vibration to a whole macromolecule moving, there are different length scales and different time scales. And so, generally we can quantify uh, these uh, time scales using what is called a relaxation time. So, if relaxation time is very small, then it is a very fast process. If relaxation time is very large, then it is a much slower process. So, therefore, each polymeric system has a collection of relaxation processes. And the key is that each of these relaxation processes depends on what temperature one is. I hope you are able to see this in the context of segmental mobility that we had discussed or crystallization rate that we had discussed as a function of temperature. When we change the temperature at certain temperature, seg segmental mobility is no longer there. So, therefore, the relaxation time of the material has changed such that flexibility is no longer present. So, therefore, each of the relaxation time or relaxation process is a very strong function of temperature. Now, the uh, sum of all of these considerations is the fact that temperature and rate effects have to be thought of when we look at overall mechanical response of polymeric system. This is true not just for mechanical response, it is also true for dielectric and other responses as we will see. So, whenever we look at properties of polymeric material systems, we need to take a close look in terms of what rate the material is being subjected to and what is the temperature at which material is because of these multiplicity of time scales. And there is a close interplay between the time scale of the material response and the time scale at which we are applying the mechanical or electrical or other loading. So, for example, experiments can be characterized by a strain rate, we shear the material using a shear rate. So, 1 over strain rate is an indication of the time scale of experiment. So, it is the ratio between uh, the material time scale lambda 
and the experimental time scale 1 over strain rate which determines the overall mechanical response. And this uh, is quantitatively captured uh, using uh, dimensionless numbers which are very relevant for viscoelastic discussions uh, called Deborah number and Weissenberg number. And both of these we de will define when we look at uh, viscoelasticity in these polymers. So, generally uh, the overall understanding of mechanical response in uh, macromolecules is uh, uh, also leads to a question that uh, many times we have not really discussed the underlying atoms and molecules in a macromolecule. When I talked about a rubber elastic response, we only talked about a rubber uh, chain uh, which uh, between cross links can get stretched. In this case of course, interactions are not important. But in case of plasticity also, I only talked about uh, orientation or stretching of macromolecules. So, for example, if I stretch this then uh, molecule gets oriented or if I have a crystalline uh, lamella, if I stretch it then the crystal will also get oriented. So, in all of this we are looking at a coarse grain picture and uh, this is possible because we have certain dominant features which are important from bulk response point of view. So, for example, for nonlinear elastic behavior for cross link rubber, we can easily get behavior based on such coarse grain picture. And what is important is several different materials which at the microstructural level are very different. So, cross link rubber, a semi crystalline polymer, but in its temperature above glass transition and a polyethylene polypropylene blend all behave similarly. And what is remarkable about uh, our understanding of these materials and the, the way we have developed theoretical uh, formulations for these is covalent cross link in case of rubber crystal domains in case of semi crystalline polymers or polypropylene domains in case of polyethylene polypropylene blend play a similar role. These are the anchoring locations in the overall sample and between these anchoring locations we have flexible chains. So, between crystal domains we have rubber like flexible chains between PP domains we have polyethylene flexible chains and between covalent cross links we have the rubber chains. So, in all these cases even though the underlying physical chemistry of the macromolecules is different, even the microstructure is very different. One case we are looking at a pure polymer with cross links, in one case we are looking at a crystalline and amorphous mixture of polymer and the third case we are looking at in fact two polymers mixed together as a blend but the behavior is very similar. So, therefore, one of the key concepts that we need to absorb is in terms of being able to describe the response at a coarse grain level or at a level where some of the details of macromolecules are not as important to describe the qualitative feature. One other concept which will be very closely related to all this discussion is related to time and temperature equivalence where uh, if we increase the temperature then uh, the time required for a similar property change will change and they are equivalent with each other. And this is used for engineering uh, applications where we can do accelerated testing and for a part which is supposed to be functioning for 30 years can be actually assessed by doing accelerated test at room temperature or higher temperature in the lab conditions. So, with this uh, we will close this lecture on uh, the mechanical response. Uh, we will continue our discussion of mechanical response not only in viscoelasticity, but also related to impact and uh, advanced mechanics of these polymeric systems. Also related is the trade tests which have to be done sometimes uh, to assess the polymer desirability for a given application. Thank you.